Welcome to another episode of Beyond the Roundup. Today we'll discuss how the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are funding a global ivermectin and fluvoxamine clinical trial targeting COVID-19, with a study called the Together COVID-19 Trial. And then, towards the end of the program, we'll talk about a new update from the NIH in regards to their stance on ivermectin. And so, from Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and the Beyond the Roundup episode starts now. A principal investigator from McMaster University in Ontario leads a large international clinical trial testing drugs targeting COVID-19, which will include ivermectin, metformin, and fluvoxamine. And so, with a growing number of studies indicating the potential efficacy of ivermectin, as well as some evidence that fluvoxamine shows promise, this large study could potentially take the evidence to the next level of credibility. The results of the study could be available within just a few months, and as I mentioned, the study is funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as well as FAST grants. So Edward Mills, who is the principal investigator of the TOGETHER trial and associate professor in the Faculty of Health Sciences, will lead the study. Now, this study involves the McMaster Research Team, as well as partners including CARD Research and the Pontifical Catholic University of Minas Gerais in Brazil and the University of Stellenbosch of South Africa. The Together COVID-19 trial involves participation in Canada, South Africa, and Brazil, as well as a few sites here, and are premised on the fact that as the pandemic continues to rage and billions of dollars spent by agencies such as U.S. Health and Human Services, there are still limited effective pharmaceutical interventions. And the reality is that mass vaccinations is a long way off, especially in low- and middle-income countries. There is an urgent need for treatments, and as evidence emerges that common, economical drugs such as ivermectin and fluvoxamine seem to be demonstrating efficacy against the coronavirus, so too then does greater interest emerge and more clinical trials like this one pop up. So let's talk then about the press release put out by the Together COVID-19 trial group. Dr. Edward Mill went on the record saying that the need for treatments in early disease is paramount. Evidence is quickly emerging that suggests a number of drugs may have promising effects on reducing COVID-19 disease severity in patients with mild to moderate disease. Our study has been designed to rapidly recruit patients to evaluate these potential therapeutics. The press release went on to note that in seven study sites in Brazil, hundreds of patients are being recruited this very week. Dr. Gilmar Reis, co-investigator of the TOGETHER trial, was also quoted as saying that for Brazil, the high incidence of COVID-19 means many patients are interested in participating. There is a particularly keen interest in our trial for its evaluation of ivermectin. Ivermectin is a cheap drug, less than $5 per treatment, and is on the list of essential medicines published by the World Health Organization. Ivermectin is typically used to treat parasitic infections. However, emerging evidence from cell studies and small clinical trials may indicate a benefit for COVID-19 patients with early disease. Now, Dr. Mills went on to say that, as the pandemic continues with no end in sight for many low- and middle-income countries, there is a growing urgency for effective therapies. Many countries simply do not have the healthcare resources to continue the current rate of patients being admitted to hospital with COVID-19. The TOGETHER trial hopes to help identify therapies to slow the pandemic, while many countries await the delivery of vaccines. The press release went on to note that if the trial is able to recruit patients at the same rate as its first evaluations, the researchers hope to have results in two to three months. And so, the evidence becomes difficult to ignore. And with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation putting money into studying the inexpensive drugs, this shows that the interest revolving around ivermectin is continuing to grow. A story which we here at Trial Site News have chronicled. We've reported on the many ivermectin studies all over the world, as well as organizations such as the Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance, 
who have generated meta-analysis of the dozens of underlining studies. Additionally, a number of researchers and physicians are now treating patients already here in the United States with ivermectin, while fluvoxamine also gains more attention thanks to research out of Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis. Now, interestingly, the clinical trial out of St. Louis Evidence is potential that the drug fluvoxamine, which is an antidepressant, may prevent COVID-19 infections from worsening. This trial is based on recent research that originates from the University of Virginia School of Medicine. Now, this clinical trial compared fluvoxamine with a placebo in 152 adult outpatients infected with SARS-CoV-2, which is, of course, the virus behind COVID-19. Of note, none of the 80 participants who received fluvoxamine became seriously ill after 15 days, while six patients in the placebo arm did become ill. Out of the six, four were hospitalized for up to 21 days while one patient was on a ventilator for 10 days. Now, although there were limitations to this small study, investigators prepared for more clinical trials to pursue this potentially novel way to fight the novel coronavirus. Meanwhile, back at the NIH, the National Institutes of Health COVID-19 Treatment Guidelines panel just updated their guidelines on ivermectin for COVID-19 again. Essentially, it's the same guidance as their interim guidance posted last month, a couple of weeks past their meeting with the leaders of the Frontline COVID-19 Critical Care Alliance and Dr. Andrew Hill, who was affiliated with the University of Liverpool. However, in this update, they now have included more information. The APEX research body panel introduced a handful of studies for the record. Of note, they did manage to select some of the worst outcome studies of the many that are the basis for both the FLCCC and Dr. Andrew Hill's meta-analysis. While the FLCCC's meta-analysis includes 16 randomized controlled ivermectin trials, 13 treatment and 3 prophylaxis, Dr. Andrew Hill's efforts included 22 randomized trials and approaches 3,000 patients. Both the FLCCC and Dr. Hill presented 17 randomized controlled ivermectin studies to this prominent panel in early January. Apparently, though, not all of these studies impressed the NIH's panel, as they included only seven such randomized studies and made a point to reference one of the worst performing studies globally out of Peru, a retrospective observational cohort study with numerous limitations. The fact that this preeminent body would refer to this particular non-randomized study in this context indicates some possible bias against advancing this generic candidate. The NIH panel must have some rationale for selecting the studies they in fact selected, while precluding not only several other studies, but also an overall meta-analysis. They also failed to evaluate dose-response data presented in the meta-analysis, many of which have large and statistically significant results. And so, the story on ivermectin continues to march on. While studies like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation-sponsored Together trial appears to show great interest in the possibility of ivermectin versus COVID-19, the NIH update appears to show a more neutral and cautious approach. And of course, as always, we here at Trial Site News will continue to keep you updated on this story as it continues to develop. And that, my friends, brings our episode to a close once more. As always, thank you so much for joining us on this program today. From Trial Site News, I'm Adrian, and I will see you all next time.